All right, this is a part two of reacting to Kyrie Irving's trade demands uh, here at Waiting for Next Year and our new video segments. Uh, wanted to kind of talk about trades that involve Kyrie Irving. Uh, first, he put a list of four teams. I believe it was New York, Miami, San Antonio, and Minnesota. With two years left on his deal, I don't really anticipate that mattering. I just don't think that he's got the kind of leverage uh, after waiting this long to demand a trade after everybody else had moved and then trying to pretend like there's only special teams he'll go to. I don't think the team's going to care about that. I don't think they owe him any favors at this point to try to do that. Um, so I don't think that that list really matters all that much. Um, maybe might be teams to start with you know, when you're trying to explore trades, but I don't think it's something that we need to stick to uh, or limit ourselves with when thinking about it. Um, my second point would be I see a lot of people trying to trade Kyrie in some sort of Carmelo Anthony deal. Um, I don't understand that at all. I think if you're going to trade Kyrie Irving, you have to be getting long-term assets back because whether you think LeBron is leaving or you think LeBron is staying, you either need to be rebuilding for post-LeBron life or giving him a reason to stay. And right now, Kyrie Irving is that reason to stay. He's a 25-year-old uh, superstar with MVP potential. Uh, so if you're LeBron James and you're scoping out all the teams next summer, Kyrie Irving is you know, number one on the list of why to stay in Cleveland. So without Kyrie Irving, I think that selling point gets harder. So I think any Kyrie Irving trade has to involve future assets uh, that can be used either to start a rebuild um, or to keep LeBron James happy and to keep him in Cleveland because that should be the number one priority. So um, I've seen people say an Eric Bledsoe and Carmelo Anthony three-team kind of deal. Again, I just don't think that sets you up. I don't think um, after I don't think that increases your odds at a finals enough to offset what it does to the future because beating Golden State any one year seems nearly impossible, but setting yourself up for another three, four-year window um, and hoping you get something to happen in those years, an injury or the right matchup or something um, seems a lot more likely. I think it's a numbers game at that point where Carmelo doesn't increase your odds in one year to offset what your odds could be if you got three or four shots at it. Um, so I also think Carmelo could be had for less than what you're gonna need to give up in a Kyrie deal. He has a no trade clause. He's pretty much said he wants to go to Houston or maybe Cleveland. So New York doesn't have a lot of options. There's not a lot of places for them to go to try to deal him. If they wanna get something, um, we should be able to put together a package that doesn't include Kyrie freaking Irving. So uh, right away, I'm not gonna talk about Carmelo as a trade option. Uh, you know, I have a couple others that I wanted to go through. Uh, the team that everybody seems to be coming back to is Phoenix. It makes a lot of sense. Eric Bledsoe is a really good point guard. Um, you know, plays great defense. He's a clutch client, which is LeBron's you know representation, um, and that makes a lot of sense. We know that LeBron likes to get his guys paid. And he likes to have them around him. You know, we've got J.R. Smith and Tristan Thompson on this team, and a lot of the contract negotiations there revolved around their relationship with LeBron. So, Eric Bledsoe makes a lot of sense to start with. Uh, they also have a lot of younger players that could fit the bill of, you know, Bledsoe could be the guy right now to step in for Kyrie, and he makes a lot of sense, but also some guys to build around. So, you know, they just drafted Josh Jackson, uh, fourth overall in the draft this year. He's a wing with a ton of potential. Um, he could make a ton of sense for the Cavs. Um, they have TJ Warren, again, another wing, a um, guy who can get the ball in the bucket a little bit, not a great shooter, but another big body that could make a lot of sense for the Cavs as they're trying to get wings. I think he's going into his fourth year. So he's also not a rookie. Um, so if you're talking about playoff matchups and, and maybe Golden State, he's a guy that might be able to be on the court a little bit more than what a Josh Jackson could. Um, they also have Devin Booker, uh, who they, I assume, would have untouchable, but maybe for Kyrie Irving, you could pry him away. But you know, a lot of people think that he has superstar potential and could be a big... Uh, future asset. So, you know, if you're able to get something like Bledsoe Booker, you do that tomorrow. Uh, Bledsoe and Warren or Bledsoe and Jackson are also fairly interesting as well. So um, a trade with Phoenix definitely makes some sense. Uh, Denver is another team with a lot of young assets um, that like Phoenix has been trying to find their own star for quite a while. Um, they have Jokic, but uh, you know, they could definitely use more parts. They just signed Paul Millsap, which might move their timeline up a little bit as well. Millsap is older. I think he's 31 or so. Um, so, you know, they might be looking to win now more so than what they might have been before. And a Kyrie Irving trade might make sense. 
Um, they have Jamal Murray, who would be, you know, again, another shooting guard who is projected to have superstar potential, who has looked promising. Um, he's been untouchable before, but Kyrie Irving hasn't been available before, so he might be available. Gary Harris is a sharpshooting wing, a couple years in the league, who could be really useful for the Cavs. Um, reports were that he was part of the Kevin Love trade that was going to be the three-team trade that sent Paul George to Cleveland. So if he was available for Kevin Love, I would imagine that you could get Gary Harris and more for Kyrie Irving. Um, and that more might look something like uh, Wilson Chandler, who was a good defensive wing, athletic, um, can get out and run, might be useful for the Cavs, um, which would be really nice. And they also have Jameer Nelson, who, well, not anything special, is a point guard who could at least replace Kyrie. So you could put together a uh, Wilson Chandler, Jameer Nelson, and Gary Harris package that you know would make the Cavs quite a bit deeper, give them some athleticism, give them some more guys on the wing, um, and a potential a Golden State matchup, or just about with anybody. You know, the Cavs are still going to have Tristan Thompson and Kevin Love. They're still going to have the ability to crash the boards and score in the post and things. So um, that's definitely an interesting trade. Uh, the other one to me that was really interesting, uh, but I'm less sure on how excited they would be for it, would be Milwaukee. Um, they have Chris Middleton, who is a really good 3 and D guy. He's also a decent ISO scorer. He's got some size to him, so he could uh, play a lot of up positions. He could play the two, he could play the three, and if you really wanted to get crazy, maybe throw him at the four a little bit um, in super, super small lineups when, say, LeBron's at center or something like that. Um, so he could make a lot of sense. Um, they have Jabari Parker, who's coming off another injury and uh, – Probably won't be ready even to start the year, but he flashed a ton of potential next year or last year. Um, he looked like he was really coming on. So if he can get his explosiveness back, that's another guy who's really exciting for the future. Um, they have Malcolm Brogdon, the point guard, who showed a lot of promise, who doesn't look like he's ever going to be an elite player, but certainly a useful player. Um, and in any trade where you're trading Kyrie, you need to get a point guard back, so that would be very useful. Um, they also have Matthew Del Vadova, who I'm not super excited about trying to get in a trade. But again, if you need a point guard back, if you're able to get Middleton and Parker and maybe Delhi didn't play great for them, so maybe they're just trying to unload his contract. Uh, Cavs have obviously put Shumpert in a lot of trades. Maybe if you do Kyrie and Shumpert, who are friends anyway, um, and take Delhi back, not because Delhi is a great player, but because they might be trying to get rid of Delhi. And we know that Delhi and LeBron can at least play together and be useful. So those are kind of the three trades that I'm looking at right now. Um, if you want to go down the list of of guys that might make sense in a trade that are on Kyrie's trade list. You know, with Minnesota, obviously Andrew Wiggins would be hilarious since the Cavs traded him for Kevin Love, but that's one that could make some sense. Doesn't make a ton of sense on the Cavs because um, he's not nearly as good on defense as what we thought he would be before he was drafted, but maybe in that situation he blossoms there. Um, his shot isn't great, but it's improved slightly, so maybe playing along with LeBron, you know, he gets more open looks. Um, so that could make some sense uh, in San Antonio. Somebody like Danny Green obviously is a, makes a lot of sense on the Cavs, but I don't know what else they would have to make it worth trading Kyrie Irving. Um, New York, we're not going to get Kristaps Porzingis. I think that died when Phil Jackson left. I think he was the only one on that franchise that was really willing to listen on him, and now that he's gone, I can't imagine them moving him. And they don't really have anything else of interest. Miami has... Goran Dragic, the point guard you could get, not overly exciting on this team. Uh, Justice Winslow, again, not super exciting. He had a ton of potential, but hasn't shown a ton at the NBA level. He can defend at an elite level, but I think in a playoff setting, he'd probably get exposed on offense pretty bad. Not interested in Hassan Whiteside on this team at all. Um, so, you know, for the teams that, LeBron, that Kyrie, excuse me, was kind of pointing out none of them make a ton of sense in terms of trades. So if I were to guess, um, I would say Phoenix or Denver make a lot of sense. Um, those are the teams I'd be really be looking at. I just can't stress enough how much future assets have to be a part of any trade. Any trade that is solely win now, um, <clears throat> I just don't think makes a lot of sense for this team. So again, thank you for joining us. Um, those are my kind of ideas. If you have other trade ideas, if you're on the trade machine and you're screen grabbing, you know, 10 different trades right now, put them in the comments. I'd love to see them. I'd love to read them. Uh, maybe I'll do another video 
if there's a couple of good ideas of ones that I missed and kind of talk through how those might make some sense. So again, thank you for joining us here at Waiting for Next Year. Like, comment, subscribe, do all those great things. We appreciate it. We appreciate the support. We appreciate you watching and we'll see you next time. Thanks.